Hi, this is Jack Crooks from Money and Markets TV. Remember back in the 1980s when everyone thought Japan was poised on the verge of economic domination? A huge credit bubble had pushed Japanese real estate prices off the charts. Japanese companies bought Rockefeller Center in New York and Pebble Beach Golf Course in California. The yen was extremely low, giving Japanese exporters a huge advantage in international markets. And as a result, Japan's trade surplus soared. In 1985, the United States, the United Kingdom, France, West Germany, and Japan tried to rectify the situation. They signed the Plaza Accord, allowing a coordinated effort by their central banks to drive the yen up and the dollar down. In that sense, the agreement worked very well. Over the next 25 plus years, the yen rose sharply against the dollar. But Japan's trade surplus stayed persistently high, at least until the start of the credit crunch in 2007. Shortly after that, Japan's surplus became a trade deficit, and the country is now deeper in the red than it's been in several decades. Ultimately, I think the credit crunch will come to be viewed as the beginning of the end of the Asian export model as we know it. That's because it marked the end of the era of unlimited global liquidity and triggered a secular change in global consumption. This shift is causing dire consequences for Japan in particular. Low growth is pushing the savings rate towards zero, and the savings that Japanese companies do have are being spent on recovering from the tsunami and plugging the holes caused by falling demand for exports. Put it all together, and Japan could be facing an internal funding shortage, which could spell disaster. The country's debt to GDP ratio is already an astronomical 215%, and the interest cost to fund the debt is huge not to mention the yearly funding needed to maintain government services. The focus on the European sovereign debt crisis has kept Japan's fiscal woes out of the spotlight, at least for now. The country can still borrow relatively cheaply on the international markets. In fact, the yield on its benchmark 20-year government bond is still around 1.7%, close to where it's been for more than a decade. But it's only a matter of time before global investors realize the extent of the problems and start demanding a higher yield for holding Japanese debt. In short, Japan is facing a triple whammy of pain, rising funding needs, falling internal sources of funding, and eventually higher borrowing costs. It's a recipe for a vicious, self-sustaining cycle that could last for years and may eventually result in a Japanese government bond default. For currency traders, what this means is that we may be very close to a major trend change for the Japanese yen. I'm Jack Crooks from Money Markets TV. Thanks for watching.